So it's been a long time since I've done one of these network tour videos and a lot has changed since my last video which was 2018. I, I, I'm sorry I haven't done any videos since then, especially network tour ones, but hey, here we are, we're doing another network tour. As you can see, literally everything in this rack has changed and as you can see this 28 port switch is almost full and I remember in one of my first network tour videos someone said oh why have you bought such a big switch for a home network you're never gonna fill it up oh what a waste of money <laughs> I don't, I'm running out of ports here um it's a big home network in a pretty small house but yeah so let's have a look at what we've got. So, at the very bottom we've got our little cable management bracket thing here. Not a fan of this, it's annoying as hell to use, but it does kind of help the mess. As you can see it kind of forces all the cables to route over here to where we have a patch panel. As you can see, some other cables that are direct to places like I've got one in here that goes to my servers downstairs. That's direct cable run now because the original cable I run into the patch panel got damaged and I needed it up and running straight away so I just crimped an RJ45 on it and now it's working I don't want to touch it it's one of them temporary solutions that keeps staying so above that we have a Cisco SG328 switch this is fantastic it's fanless it's layer free 28 ports of gigabit switch it's also got some SFP ports over here. I don't use the SFP ports, but they're there. I think they're only regular SFP though, not SFP+. It's a fantastic switch. I'm not a huge fan of the command line. I mostly use the web interface because the command line just isn't that good. But the actual switch isn't too bad. I don't mind it. I'd love to get a proper layer free Cisco switch in here. In fact, I have a proper layer free Cisco switch. The only problem is it's incredibly loud. This is a house, obviously, and silence is more important. Above that, we have the old faithful Cisco. What is that? 2820G? Yeah, 2820G 8 Peary, 8 port Peary switch gigabit as well this was one of the very first things I actually bought for this home network um, like my proper home network it was my first managed switch and everything and I bought it because oh the school I was at at the time was all using HP switch and I was like oh yeah I'll buy a HP switch because if it's good for my terrible school it'd be good for me and here we are with this switch so on here we've got several access points we've got one here that's labeled wisp but it's not actually a wisp it's just where's that action cable go to i don't know what it goes to probably an ip phone if i remember it's just a cable that i had laying around most of my pre stuff is on orange cables though so we've got access points i think we've got a camera on here uh it's hard to track all the pre devices but there's ip phones access points and maybe something else I can't remember exactly what's on there um, I also have here a Microtik gigabit PoE injector this is passive PoE obviously 24 volts which is why it's a dongle like that so I was looking at replacing this with a Microtik switch so I can do that without having multiple switches but that's a lot of money and then at the top we've got our new router this is a Microtik RB 2011 UIAS RM rack mount switch as you can see it's got a little screen on there which shows my current network traffic it does go off after a while but it's pretty cool as you can see we've got three things plugged into it we've got the red cable which goes to a BT open reach modem up here the yellow cable goes down into the Cisco SG328 right on the end there and then the black cable there is actually a PoE output to a Microtik 4G router which is on the roof so I'll go show you that so here we are outside and this is the Microtik LHG LTE6 which is pointing off into the distance at a 4G mast this is actually providing us about 40 megabits down 15 megabits up if you're lucky on a good day which isn't too bad really 
and it's not even that expensive. Micro tick stuff is surprisingly cheap, so this is quite good and it's just mounted on the roof like that. I still have the Cisco 2821 router doing VoIP stuff and as you can see above there I have a Cisco 887V that was the router I was using after the 1841 I upgraded to an 887V because it had VDSL in it and it was pretty decent but the micro tick is better in the window over here we actually have two more micro tick 4G routers I've been testing with as you can see they're kind of haphazardly mounted um, they're pretty decent I really like this micro tick stuff it's new to me but I'm enjoying it so yeah as you can see that's not getting a very good signal that top one but it's still better than my internet connection I was getting with my normal broadband provider. Shocking. I'm also still using the Cisco APs that I was using before. This is a Cisco 3500 but I think all the other ones in my network are 2600s. You can see an old 1130 there as well and there's an old Axis IP camera that's one of the things on the PRE switch. This is all really haphazardly wired but it's working so that's good. So this is the only server left now, actually. It's a HP DL380E Generation 8. It's a pretty beasty server. It does everything now. So we've got, I think, four SSDs here at the front here for VM storage. And right at the back in there, we have four of the hard drives that used to be in my HP Micro server. And in the back we have two more SSDs for the OS running Windows Server 2016 on here with the Hyper-V roll it works pretty well above that we have an APC UPS this thing has been invaluable the UK power network are terrible as of lately we've been having power cuts basically every week for about 40 minutes every time honestly I don't know why we paid them so much money it would probably be cheaper to buy fuel in a generator that can run the whole house than deal with the UK power network but for now, this UPS is working well. And above that we have a HP LaserJet printer. Uh, yeah, it's just a printer. And over there you can probably just about see the old HP ML110 that I'm no longer using because this server uses less power than it, but it replaces the micro server as well. So it's a win-win situation. I've got a faster server, I'm using less power, and I've only got one server to manage now. And for if you're wondering why this thing is so quiet, I've got the HP ILO fan mod installed on here and I manually set the fan speeds on it. It's um, a bit fun to deal with at times, but it does mean that this server is dead silent really. It's no louder than a normal computer. But I have had a few times where it shut down due to thermal overload because of the RAID card and stuff in here. Ugh. It does make me want to switch all of my servers out for Intel NUX, if only I had the money. And here we have one of the Cisco 2600 APs that has replaced an old 3500. So here we are at the front door and we have a Microtik RB260 GSP. This is a fantastic switch that has four PRE outputs but it can be powered by PRE. So this is allowing me to have a PRE IP camera on the same network line and pass a gigabit PRE connection through to our shed, which is amazing. This switch is also really cheap, it's about 50 pounds. And that is what was being powered by that PRE injector up in the network rack. This thing is amazing. I love Microtik products and I couldn't have found a better product for what I needed really. And now here we are in the shed where we have a Cisco 2960S PRE switch. It's very messy in here and I'm sure I'm going to kill this switch but it's kind of needed. This switch is powering a couple of IP cameras and a couple of access points. And it's also got two gigabit ports which is important because I need a second gigabit port to go to a future home office. So there we go, that was an updated network tour for 2021. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I am going to be doing some more videos, especially on some Microtik stuff because I really am liking their hardware at the moment. It's cheap and it's really powerful for what you're getting. That being said, I do kind of like my Cisco stuff and I'd love to do some more Cisco videos in the future. 
I have, say, Cisco switches and stuff that I'd love to show off as well. So do subscribe if you enjoy these videos. I'll try and do some more this year.